Welcome back everyone. I have been getting a lot of questions about early hammer, early hammer manipulation. How does it work? The fact that I changed my tool, am I still doing the same thing? Am I only using audio cues? What am I doing now? So I decided to scrap my old early hammer video, get rid of that one. That was like 10 years old. I'm gonna make a brand new one. This one is gonna be early hammer manipulation for dummies. And I'm not wasting any time, so let's just jump right in. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna show you just exactly what's going on behind the scenes. I feel like if you guys can see what's kind of going on on my desktop with the emulator, you'll have a better understanding of how this all works. So when I'm streaming, as you can see, I have my early hammer holder, and then I have my emulator right here. And this is what we're gonna be using. I got my splits down here, but I mean, normally they're off somewhere else. So what I do is I take my copy of Mario 3, and all I do is just, I just drag it on. Then I have what's called an FM25, File, which is something that the FCUX can read. It's like a task file. That's all it is. It's just a video of a task that we created. Okay, we drag that in. So now it's starting the task. Now it's playing the video. If I press tab here, it will fast forward through the video. And this is ex the exact video that gets the early hammer. Okay, and it's the same as the tool with Narf Man. So if I pause it and unpause it, we go back to world two, it can scene transition, and it starts doing the correct movements. Very easy. On top of that, uh, if I press R, it just resets back to zero. You can see the, the lag frames back to zero, the video frame. And what I used to do is power on and press space bar at the same time, and I try and sync it up. That's that's all that I'm doing, That that's it. And then right here, we have the Lua file, which is the early hammer helper. And as soon as I drag that on, it's got the dots here. Sorry, it's got the, the squares here. So if I press play, like normal, normal space bar. I can tab myself all the way, all the way to world two. And you'll be able to see that the purple boxes fill up. Oh, you just saw it right there. And right there, the purple boxes fill up. It's got the line level two, same thing, purple. So that's exactly how the Lewis script works there. And we don't use this, well, I don't use this emulator method anymore, but what you can use is the Narfman tool, which we discussed before. So what does that mean? That means we, we got all the tools and everything ready, but how exactly do we get early hammer? Well, step number one is if we go back to the beginning, this is the lag frames right here, okay? First thing in order is that you wanna copy the same lag frames. Luckily, they're super duper consistent. So every time I reset the game, it always has 12 lag frames from the startup, right? As you can see, every single time. Without the lag frames being that consistent, we would be in a world of hurt. When you transition from the start, always 24 right there. Every time you enter 1-1, one, one, always 87. But as you see, when you go through the level, if you keep your eyes on the lag frames, you'll see that during the level, no lag frames are being Done. And that's why we do the turtle shell jump that you guys see me do all the time. The turtle shell jump. You gotta watch out for that. Sometimes the turtle shell jump section will lag, um, but you have to be able to identify that and fix it on the spot. Pretty much just reset and uh, start again. In world one, you only have to watch your lag frames. Always 164 on this level, and then you don't create any lag frames in any other level. Very, very plain and simple. That's your goal, step number one. Get your tools, get your emulator, and then you want to create no lag frames in 1-1, one, 1-2, one, one, all the way to the end of world one. And you won't create any extra lag frames in this level, scene transitions, and then you get to world two. This is where it gets a little complicated. So I've explained this before, but I'll bring it down in a little bit more detail. In Mario 3, your score can create lag depending on how high or low all the digits add together when transitioning inside levels or when transitioning inside pipes or even pipe transitions inside of levels. Now, the task gets a seven, 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 six. If adding up all of your score equals less than 29, you will not create a lag frame. So you just count them. That's just for two one. If it's less than 29, when exiting two one, you will not create a lag frame when exiting from this position. When it transitions from this black screen right here, that transition right there, if your score is less than 29, after all, after the timer right here counts it up. So you beat the level, the timer goes, boom. So that right there, is that less than 29? Yes, it is. I'm not gonna create a lag frame when I transition out of the level right 
here, this, this screen, for some reason, that's how it works with the score. So because the task did not lag there, when I'm copying early hammer manipulation, I just want to make sure that my score is less than 29. It doesn't have to be exact with the task, but you might as well make it exact just so you can copy it and make it more consistent. But yes, you do not need to copy it, but as long as it's less than 29. Now, when you do level two, if your score is 23 or less, you will create a lag frame. So if we check the task right here, the task has nine, eight, six, and one. That is more than 23. That's one digit higher. Hold on, let me just make sure I do the math. Nine, 10, 18, yeah, yeah. Okay, so because it equals 24, it does get the lag frame. So when you're copying the task, you need to make sure you get this lag frame into two. When you do that, you will get the specific movement. If you don't get the lag frame, you're actually gonna be off by about four or five frames. For some reason in this game, a lag frame exiting a level is not just one frame. I've noticed that I get movements of four if I don't create the lag frame, and movements of four is like four or five frames early than the target frame that you wanna jump on with the manipulation. So when you exit the level right there, if for some reason it caused a lag frame, that caused you to lose like four or five frames or something, I don't know, but it gives the right movement. Now the fortress also has that same thing to it. With the fortress, you wanna exit with at least 17 or less. 17 or less will cause you to not get the lag frame. 17 or more, you will get the lag frame. So when you grab the orb, you're gonna exit the level, the score is gonna count up, and then this digit right here is gonna be seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 15. That's less than 17, so you don't create the lag frame. A blessing in disguise is that if you do 2-1 and 2-2 and you follow the task and you get more than 23 like this, when you exit the fortress, as long as you copy the fortress the exact same, you don't even have to worry about the lag frame getting it or not getting it because your score is gonna end up being the exact same as the task. That's why it's always beneficial to just try and copy the task up until 2-2, 2 fortress, and then you're golden. You are golden. Now that you understand the lag frames and you gotta watch out the lag frames, what exactly are we doing? If we go back to two one here, you can see the bar right here. The squares are counting up in intervals equal to each other until they get to the exact center. On that last purple flash, or right here, as you can see right, Ooh, I missed it. On that last purple flash, you want to press A on the controller. You can see in the bottom here that the task has it lit up and then jumps. So we can load that again right here, just so you can watch. I'll load it again a couple times. Ooh, very consistent though. I am stopping it very close. Oh, right there. Okay, so if I was playing on the original console and I synchronized my emulator and the console perfectly and I got no lag frames, if I jumped on that frame that I just stopped right there, I would get the proper movement with the Hammer Brother. And that's what you're looking for. So you do that for 2-1, you do it for 2-2, two, two, and you do it for 2 Fortress. Just to give you guys a better understanding, this is not frame perfect. Now, the frame I'm trying to hit, yes, is frame perfect. But if we open up this folder right here, this will give you guys a lot more detail on what we're talking about in streams and stuff. If I scroll down here, you can see local good frame for 2-1 is 18,046. Okay, so if we go back to the emulator and we reload and look down here, right? You got your frame counter. So if we load right here, do, 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 do. We're gonna frame advance to the purple frame and it says 18,046 right there. But if you scroll down here, it shows uh, multiple frames. So what that means is that if you look right here, this star right here, this good with the star is a frame that you want and that's frame 18,046. The star represents that that is 18,046, perfect. If you are one frame earlier, you get a bad frame. But if you're two frames earlier, you get a good frame. So you could frame perfect jump, or you could be um, early by two frames and still get it, or you can be late by one frame and still get it. As you can see, right and up, right and up for these two frames, 46 and 47, okay? And then when you have 2-2, two, two, which is very nice for 2-2, two, two, you have the local good frame, 19,947, but you have a three frame window, which is amazing. We're so blessed. That's why you see 2-2 work most of the time. 
I hope that makes a lot more sense for people trying to understand what the heck is going on for early hammer manipulation. Okay, I'm gonna go into the task editor. So you guys can see the task editor right here. I'm gonna scroll down to, uh, what is it? 19,947. Let's go down to 19,947. If I press A one frame earlier, right there, okay? And it checks out, we should still get the same movement. Let's see. As you can see, watch, if I frame advance, Mario is going to jump right there. Perfect. Instead of the one frame after. And as we watch, the Hammer Brothers should go over the Mushroom House. Boom. You still got the exact same movements. When we talk about good frames and bad frames, that's exactly what we're talking about. The unfortunate part, this is what everyone needs to understand. The Fortress is incredibly difficult. Okay, you have one good frame, one bad frame, one good frame. And I like to set up the frame to be on the bad frame because I feel like you jump one frame earlier or one frame later way more than you frame perfect. I swear to God, it's so hard to always do frame perfect. Every time I do frame perfect or think I do, I always get like a late frame back here after the good. If I set this good frame to be the action frame, I never jump two frames early. I always jump late. So I always put the bad frame here. But that puts a lot of context on what's going on in 2-1, 2-2, and 2-Fortress. A lot of people are starting to think that early hammer manipulation is free, but we have to not disrespect the early hammer manipulation. It is not free. This is incredibly hard right here. With that being said, I hope you guys really, really understand a lot more with what's happening with early hammer manipulation. I'm not specifically using that method anymore. I'm using just audio cues, but all of the audio cues take everything that you just saw and puts it into its own tool made by Narfman to allow us to use audio cues. That's it, nothing's changed. My action frames for the audio cues are the exact same as what I just showed you. And the task that's playing along with the audio cues is the exact same. Power on the console and the emulator on the same frame. Don't create any lag frames because the task doesn't. That's why, that's the only reason. If the task created like five lag frames, we would probably try and create five lag frames too. Get to world two, enter two one at the same time, do the timing method. You could be one frame late, frame perfect, two frames early. Two two, you have a three frame window. Two four, good, bad, good. Early hammer manipulation for dummies. There you go, guys. Now you know it, go teach it to someone. Thank you very much for watching and let's get those nips. Take it easy, everyone.